Racing in America is partially sport, partial show. freezing cold Daytona Saturday morning race day we're now going to drivers briefing it's nice and sunny but the wind doesn't make you start shooting I really really appreciate that and I'm looking forward to the auction this year Thanks, Terry. signing a autograph session for the fans again we're gonna get really close to them uh, they get to come along here um, and we've well I prepared some autograph cards which Louis is designing, Miami but uh, my favorite side is this side. I think we all have race. our special characters. And then I took uh, it this up is to the Montreal official side, but this is my race. side. And with the guy from there are flags everywhere, music will be singing, the anthems, the people will be standing, clapping, shouting, and we're out there to provide a show for them during the sporting yeah. event. The parade and the preparations just before the start of the race are super intense. It's noisy, but at the same time for every driver, it's quiet in their head. They've got one thing in their mind, which is the focus, but at the same time, there's a lot going on. Flags, fireworks, engines running. And then at the end, everything that gets started is when that one man says, gentlemen, start your engines. And then you know it's ready to go. We're at the start of the Daytona 24 hour race. The engines are starting to warm up and it's the perfect time to announce the sponsor for this video and this event, Rima Sports Exhaust. They've been removing me for multiple years, looking after me and getting me to the places like this, opportunities to try and win a Rolex. Thank you so much, Remus, and we're gonna get these engines revving hard. The classic Rolex 24 at Daytona is back to its absolute best and we're green and racing. My car has got around 600 horsepower, four wheels, and a lot of aero downforce. We've got Michelin rubber on, which is some of the best tires we can get. They are absolutely dormant to dormant. These cars are fast, they're rattling, they're noisy. They brake extremely fast, so you're constantly moving, your body's going side to side. All your organs are going from one side in your body to the other. Darkness, uh, six o'clock, so it's officially sunset. Fantastic part of the evening, and the lights around the circuit are just beginning to take effect on pit lane and on the infield sections. This is Mission Control of Tower Motorsports. Um, I'm about to get in for the first time. Uh, John Ferrano is driving right now and there's a full course yellow. Hopefully he'll make it to the end and then I can get in immediately or else I'll have to wait another 40 minutes. But finally it's time for me to get in the car. You're putting man and machine through a lot of stresses. One unique part of Daytona that no other track really delivers is the extreme banking. It's so steep and it's just completely flat out around those corners. The things that start aching are your shoulders and your body in those corners because there's so much g-force constantly being held. You're being pushed down into your seat and you can barely see very far because it's so banked and so sharp, the corners. The rest of the infield, unique old school racing. Tarmac and then grass is what every driver loves. Just got out of the car. I'm sweating a bit. It was really good. I think I said the, the fastest lap of so far. But yeah, it was really, really good. Took it from fourth to the lead, I think. We'll do a little gap. And now, I really, really need to go for a piss. In a second. I need to run, I need to for a piss. I actually love racing in the night more than in the day. The headlights really only beam up the portion of the track that you really need to see. There's no more distractions. All you can see is what the lights are showing you and the little buttons on the steering wheel that you need. That was the leader in the LMP2 class, Ferdinand. It shows your opponent directly in front of you and it gives you like a tunnel vision that day racing just can't provide. It just gives you in a zone and you're sharp and focused. Nothing else is in your head. The 
then when that sun comes up in the morning, that first glimmer of light, it gives you a lot of hope that the race might end soon. But it also tells you, okay, now we really have to start pushing a little bit more because the end of the race is the most important part. Huge sunshine in the face moment. The seven o'clock hour in the morning with 6,040 minutes or thereabouts to go. Pit stops are purely there to refurbish the car, give her a bit more fuel, put her some new tires on, give her that extra grip and maybe give her a new driver. One thing people don't realize is cars drive the entire 24 hours. The engines are running constantly. If the guys and the mechanics are quick and the drivers are good in the driver change, you can make two to three or maybe even 10 seconds to stop. And when you're fighting for tenths, that's like the holy grail. Got a fast car and very, very fast drivers. To win a 24 hour race, it always includes a bit of luck. You can't do it without it. You can't make any mistakes either. So you've got to make your luck at the same time. We've got to stay patient. We've got to take the moves where we can and take the losses where we have to. Leading the 60th Rolex 24 at Daytona. After 24 hours working with a whole crew of guys, you just bond like crazy. There's no other really experience like that. Spending 24 hours constantly with them, everybody sweating, tears and blood in reality. You just share a special experience, and if that ends up with a win, that's a bond you keep for life. A shiny Rolex Daytona Cosmograph. The watch that has become legendary. Louis Delatra is ahead of Colt Murder at the restart. I've done all my driving. Louis is in for the last hour. Um, we're second, close behind the leader. So we had, I don't know if you guys, uh, if I told us, but uh, we had a puncture which dropped us out of the lead and put us back to third. Now we're up to second and with the leader. So we have an hour and a half left for Louis to do his thing, which we all trust in him that he can do. I did everything I could and so did the team. So whatever the result, I'm quite happy. I'm gonna go and undress and shower and spend time with the mechanics who have been working crazy all night. Don't stop, tire change, tire change, tire change, refill, refill, tire change. So uh, we're all a bit tired, but yeah, the race, you know, the, 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 the end of the tunnel is coming and uh, we will know in an hour what the result is if we win or we don't. In goes, this is a defining moment of 15 minutes to go. P3. You win some, you lose some. Well done, dude. Come on. We'll get him next time. I know. I know. I'm sorry. No, no, man. Fuck, man. Just. It fucking hurts. Ten minutes to go, we were winning the race, but sometimes that's how it goes, man. You know, you lose the race at the end. We were four cars on the leading lap, four cars fighting for the lead on the last couple laps. And yeah, it's a bummer, but at the same time, we did a really good race. At the end, we had a bit of an unfortunate thing with a blown tire. Um, if we hadn't had that, it would have been a much easier race for us. But uh, from there, we couldn't quite recover. We were stumbling, but then we got us up back in the lead with a bit of strategy, and it wasn't quite enough. But <laughs> proud of all the guys, proud of my teammate Rui. And uh, it's been a mega event, mega week. I'm quite tired now. I'll have a good rest and a bit of a holiday. And yeah, catch up with you guys later.